Welcome back to the Competitor Talk. This is your host, Kyle Dangler. This podcast is presented by Laugh Creative Works, and today we were very fortunate to be joined by Takal Molson, now new Seton Hall University guard. So we're going to be talking to him about his time, you know, picking Canisius, you know, back up in his hometown, back up in Buffalo, you know, then why he chose the Pirates, you know, what he's looking forward to playing with the Pirates next year. So here we go. Hello. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show. Sorry, though. Good, how are you? Uh, do you want to just get started and we'll get going? I said, yeah, we can get started. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, just, you know, doing a little bit of research about you, starting off at, uh, you know, your high school career and then going to the Prep Academy down in Florida and then going back up to your hometown up in Buffalo to play Kinesius for two years. Just curious, you know, why you picked the school, you know, just wanted to stay local, you know, were they recruiting you hard? I mean, what led you to, you know, that being your first stop in college? Um, yeah. Uh, I think I think really what well, uh, well, I had three offers at the time: Kenosha, Manhattan, and Quinnipiac. Okay. So um, it was like it was cool and stuff like that, but they really they didn't pull the trigger. They didn't offer, okay. and I uh, didn't really didn't want to play the waiting game. Yeah. So out of my options, I feel like Kenosha was the best. I was local. No, yeah, definitely. You know, just in your time there, you know, just looking at your stats, I mean, coming in as a freshman, you know, taking on a big leadership role there and, you know, being a rookie all Mac, uh, rookie of the year in the Mac. And then, you know, looking forward to the, your following year there. Just curious, you know, coming into your first season, how prepared were you, you know, going into your freshman year at Canisius after your prep year, having that extra year? Uh, I feel like I was very prepared. I got my body. Again, probably about 10 pounds from high school to prep. Uh, we played against really good JUCO down in Florida, top-ranked JUCO. They're like top 10 in the nation. So it really got me ready for the college field, and I think that really helped a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just being... You know, a multi, you know, talented guard. You know, being able to play multiple zi- positions and guard at multiple positions. What do you think? You know, at Canisius, you know, what was your main position? You know, what do you feel like you contributed to that team there in your first two years? Uh, my main position really was to just just do do what I can to win. I didn't really have a set position on the court. It was just whatever I needed to be at that time. That's where I would go. And that's just what I would do. Whatever it took to win is what I would do. Yeah, so, you know, just, you know, looking at your stats, I mean, going from your freshman to sophomore year, you know, after having such a such a successful freshman year, what were you looking towards in your sophomore year, you know, trying to build on, were you trying to build on, you know, taking more of a leadership role points-wise, rebounds-wise? I mean, because you basically did it all at your time at Canisius. Just curious, you know, what you worked on, you know, after playing one full year of college basketball. Uh, I really tried to work on, uh, well, Coach challenged me to be, uh, more of a vocal leader, because I struggle with that, um, I usually keep to myself during games and stuff like that, or practices, I'd be in my own little zone, but, um, I'm one of the guys that are in the spotlight, so people look after me or whatever, and I was one of the guys that led by example, but Coach wanted me to be more vocal because he knew people would listen to me. So I tried to work on that more, uh, get a, get a, uh, knowing every spot on the floor, uh, telling people where to go. Just kind of being that kind of guy I worked on a lot from freshman to sophomore year and just knowing when, when and where to make plays on the court sophomore year was really the two biggest things that I had to work on. No, you definitely, you know, with the, you know, caliber and talent that you have, it definitely, uh, I can see why your coach was, you know, trying to push you to that leadership role. And then, you know, just going from your freshman to sophomore year, you know, freshman year, you guys were 21 and 12. You made a pretty good run, you know, throughout the season. And then last year, you know, you went 15 and 17. Was it kind of, you know, underwhelming season, you know, finishing, you know, in a rough spot there? Uh, yeah, it was kind of, you know, it was a down season. We, we had higher expectations, higher hopes. Uh, I put some of that on me for, you know, I could, it's a lot of things I could have did better with the team, but 
all in all, I still think we played hard, gave it our all. And got, we didn't get the results we wanted, but uh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, just going through that, I mean, your points per game went up. You know, your assists basically stayed the same. Your free throw percentage went up. I mean, you improved on everything, you know, even two-point percentage-wise. But just curious, you know, just looking at your three-point percentage, I mean, you took double the amount, and you made slightly below the average you made your freshman year. Was it just the amount of shots you were taking, you know, kind of decreased the percentage? Or, you know, were you off, you know, a few games that kind of swayed the uh, percentages? You know, what happened for you last year? Uh, I think, uh, I don't think I was in shape enough, actually, my sophomore year. Okay. I don't think uh, I was conditioned enough for the workload that I had to carry uh, with the team, so. Was there anything, you know, specific that you didn't? Shot, shot percentage went down a lot. Yeah. And I kind of, uh, I kind of, I forced things a lot my sophomore year. Yeah. So I kind of took ill advised shots and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, like my freshman year, I was just taking, you know, the open shots and stuff like that. But sophomore year, it was kind of tough uh, when the scouting report is on you, like more based around you. Yeah. Yeah, so you're being in the spotlight. I mean, was it difficult for you, you know, taking on, you know, that leadership role, but, you know, also at the same time knowing you're going to have to, you know, lead the team in scoring? I mean, was it difficult to know walking into the arena that, that like, all eyes were on you? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't difficult, I would say. I mean, I like it's more of a change. High school and stuff like that, but it, it did. Uh, it changed my mind. The coach made me look at it a different way. He didn't want me to come into the game saying, "Oh, I gotta have twenty points, or I gotta do this or do that." He was basically just telling me just go in thinking you gotta win, and that's what I would think. So, you know, playing, you know, at Canisius for your first two years, I mean, were you more of an off-ball player? You know, were you more having the balls in your hands or, you know, a spot-up shooter? I mean, what do you think, you know, your best asset in the game is, you know, offensive-wise? Uh, well, my whole career, starting off high school, whatever, I was used to, you know, being a combo guard, mostly being on the ball a lot yeah. and making plays. But as I got to prep school and, you know, college, I had to start working and being off the ball. I'm still facing that challenge because it's kind of hard to come from on the ball your whole career to just being off the ball. So you got to be patient and then make plays when you get the ball. But I'm always, I was always used to having it, so it's, it's still a big challenge right now. And I think my best asset is when I have the ball and I'm making plays, being a combo guy, but it's not going to always go that way in college. So you got to work on being versatile and being in a different spot. Some, some games, might got to be a spot-up shooter. Some games, you got to make plays. I'm just going through that challenge of no, knowing you, when to do that. No, yeah, definitely, you know, versatility is definitely big, you know, especially coming in the Seton Hall. You know, you got a lot of talent there. So, you know, just playing, you know, different roles is definitely going to help you get on the floor and, you know, maintain time. But just curious, you know, before we talk about Seton Hall – and, you know, why you chose there. Just curious, you know, playing in Canisius College, uh, kind of in your local hometown, how nice was it for you to, you know, stay home for your first two years and play? Oh, man, it was great. Man. I, had so, I had so much support from family, friends. Like, I had family in freshman year, first game versus UP. Like, pretty much everybody from Buffalo that lived there, I tried to be, like, kind of my own band section. Like, that's how games were, but it was... It was fun. Like, I had so much support. I felt so comfortable, you know, to just go up there and do me and be the best person I could be. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, nice having your family around. But, you know, now just, you know, after those two years, you know, now you're going to Seton Hall. I mean, I personally go there as well. But what did you see in the college that, you know, made you pick Seton Hall? You know, was it the atmosphere? Was it, you know, meeting the teammates? Was it the coaching staff? Was it the, you know, academics? I mean, what really, you know, drew you to Seton Hall? Uh, Seton Hall was, uh, I knew... Once I was yesterday, 
enter my name and transfer portal and stuff like that. They reached out immediately, uh, came down to see me immediately. Uh, you know, Coach Willard called me, talked to me, and told me what he liked about my game. Uh, Coach Willard, Coach Forty, they they kept the real with me from the jump. Even when I came with my visit, they didn't make it out to be peaches and cream. You know, they told me what they liked about me, what I need to work on, and stuff like that. So. That's, that's one of the big reasons why I came. And I like the players. Sando was a great host in my visit. Uh, got the history. We was going to his hometown and stuff like that. So that was interesting. And it's not, you know, it's not too big of a school academically. It's stuck. It's like similar to Kenesha's academically and stuff like that. It's just a bigger. But it's still kind of on a smaller scale. But... So I think that's why I like that. I like that type of atmosphere for academics. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely, you know, Seton Hall. You know, when you were going through the transfer portal, you mentioned, you know, putting your name in. Just curious, you know, any other schools that you were highly considering along with Seton Hall throughout the process? Uh, yeah, I have a few schools I consider. I consider Seton Hall, Oregon High School, Oregon State, Oregon Okay. Uh, I would say Oregon and Seton Hall were my top two schools that I consider highly. All the other schools, uh, I didn't really consider it too highly. It was pretty much out of Oregon and Seton Hall where I thought I would fit the best and, you know, to finish my career. No, oh, yeah, you know, definitely, you know, when you were going through the process, you know, you looked at Oregon and Seton Hall. I mean, coming to the Big East, how, you know, are you going to take this season of, you know, having to sit out because of eligibility reasons? How are you going to, you know, prepare, you know, to play in the Big East, you know, definitely in a tougher conference, you know, you're playing um, more, you know, different, you know, versatile players. And then on top of that, probably uh, more talented players. I mean, how are you going to up your game to, you know, correspond to, you know, going into the new conference? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough year to sit but I'm just- I'm going to look at it in a different light. Basically, I'm going to look at it as every day is a, a pro workout with, with uh, NBA teams in a, in a gym. That's how I'm going to think about it. So each day I'm going to go in and push myself to get better. And I'm going to, uh, I'm still part of the team, still not enough. So I'm going to push guys like Miles Powell, Miles Carroll, Jerry Rowan. I'm going to push those guys. So when it comes time to play other guys, there's no worries. So I'm definitely going to take on that role and push the team. So we can win the biggest championship. I'm, I, I'm still a part of that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, definitely, you know, in practice. And I'm sure you'll be at the home games. You know, definitely going to be a great atmosphere to be in. But, you know, coming into the Big East Conference, you know, playing with Seton Hall, I mean, just coming into that type of atmosphere, you know, at the Rock, you know, your home games, and then, you know, not being able to go on the road with the team. I mean, do you think it's going to be difficult, you know, having the watch, you know, kind of from the sideline? To know that you know you can't help out this year, you know, on the court. Uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be tough just watching. You know, you love basketball so much. I have to sit out of here. It's tough, but um, it's gonna make me hungry. I'm just gonna be in the gym working while they're in the game playing, going hard. I'm gonna be going as hard in the gym alone. So when they come back or whatever practice, whatever the case may be, uh, I'm still shy of where you go and just showing my improvement. Yeah, showing out of for next year. Awesome, yeah. So, you know, just coming into the new conference, you know, obviously you're a very talented player, you know, coming out of, you know, the Canisius College. But, you know, coming into Seton Hall, I mean, what have what do you have on yourself or even, you know, coaches or teammates? What have they, they been, you know, pushing you towards to really progress your game? I mean, is it your shooting, passing? I mean, obviously you're trying to progress every day on, you know, everything, but what are you trying to hone in on coming into, you know, this year uh, you have to sit out and looking into next year? Uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to focus on becoming a pro, really, because we're, you know, assistant coaches are really pushing it. Because that's the ultimate goal is to become a pro, but, you know, to be a pro, you have to be able to make perimeter shots consistently. So I'm really working on uh, making jump shots consistently every day, working on my handle. Uh, so I to get back to being, you know, when I step on the court, basically being a combo guy, you know, bringing it up, making plays, stuff like that. So I'm really just working on ball handling, making shots, really. That's really has been the key so far. 
Yeah. So a little bit before you mentioned, you know, coming into your sophomore year at Canisius, you really weren't, you know, prepared conditionally wise, you know, to uh, take on the load uh, condition wise. Just curious, have you been doing anything differently? You know, obviously you can't play this year, but, you know, are you going to be doing anything differently with your conditioning to, you know, make sure you're prepared to, you know, play, you know, 40 minutes if you have to a night? Uh, well, I would say, well, I would say my regimen is different now. You know, I've seen all training staff, like, I'm on a whole different regimen now. Like, my body feels so much better. The way we're lifting, the way we get up and down on the court every day. Uh, it just wasn't the same regimen as Kenesha's, you know. It's a higher level, so coach, you know. Oh, it's a higher standard, but I'm definitely going to uh, do work on my own. Stay conditioned while, you know, guys are on the road and stuff like that. So I know when I get on next year, you know, I'll be conditioned to play whatever for however many minutes the coach throws at me. So, you know, just, you know, coming into the next year, obviously, you know, it seems like a long ways away. But, you know, practicing with the team this summer so far, I mean, how has your time been so far at Seton Hall with the team? Uh, my time has been good so far. You know, I've been improving every day. Uh, just not how to play uh, Big E type of basketball because it's, you know, it's, it's definitely a different type of feeling. It's way more space, you know. Guys are more bigger, athletic. And it's more of an open court, you know, now. The major wise, there was a lot of health defense and the court is kind of compact. So you got to move around the ball a lot. Uh, so I'm just, you know, figuring out how to how to play this style of basketball and adapting, but it's been good, you know, making shots, stuff like that. I'm just working on being consistent, really. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome to hear. So, you know, just, you know, mentioning just a little bit about practice, you know, with Coach Willard, uh, Miles Powell, and Miles Kale with US, USA Basketball right now, I mean, how has practice been, you know, without some of the key leaders there? I mean, just practicing without them, I mean, are you guys still practicing, you know, with the same level or, you know, you guys getting some downtime while they're gone? How is it going so far with that? No, they're gone that way, but we're working, like Coach. Coach isn't letting us, you know, just relax and chill because, you know, guys are already doing things. Like we're in the gym working every day at the stations, you know, ball handling, shooting, can play down here and there. Like, we're, we're working, so we're not taking any breaks. You know, these guys have a tough schedule coming up this year. Uh, there's no breaks we're, we're at. We're getting extra time in on our own, things like that. So there's, uh, there's no downtime because guys are working. Yeah, it, so, you know, we talked to uh, a few weeks ago your teammate uh, guard, Isaiah Avin, you know, just like the process of, you know, practice and weightlifting. I mean, I'm just curious, are you on a set schedule for, you know, weightlifting, you know, every f like five, six days or, you know, do you lift every day? And, you know, how much are you in the gym, you know, every day or how does it go for you? Uh, yeah, um, so, you know, I'm lifting pretty much every day, probably get one day, well, two well, one day off during the week, you know, we don't lift on the weekends. Uh, so the lifting is going really well. Uh, lifts totally different from conditions, you know. But it's definitely for the better. And um, I'm always in gym every day. I'm trying to work on being consistent with making shots. So I got to go there and get extra reps up, even if it's after practice, things like that, getting on the gun machine. So that, I'm always in there working on making shots. Just, just making shots. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, are you there right now at Seton Hall? You know, you guys are on campus right now, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, I'm, yeah, I'm staying on campus right now. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, just being on campus right now, you know, in the summer, I mean, besides basketball, you know, have you been hanging out with the team, you know, getting to know your new teammates? I mean, what else outside of basketball have you been doing to keep busy? Uh... Outside of basketball, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys that outside of basketball, I'll go, I'll be around with the team, too, but at the end of the day, I'm thinking about going, what, what time am I going back to the gym, to be honest. Yeah, that's uh, awesome to stay hungry, yeah. You know, I've been to the beach, you know, uh, the weekend and stuff like that, but other than that, I'm just thinking, when can I get back in the gym? 
try to take a nap before I go back to the gym, things like that. I don't yeah, that's awesome to hear. You know, definitely. You know, excited to see you on the court. Then, just curious. You know, also I saw on uh, via Instagram you were at the Jungle Runs in Whippany, uh, New Jersey. I mean, how did you get in contact with them? You know, to you know take part in that. And I mean, how'd you like your time there? Uh, yeah, um, I was with uh, Darnell Brody. Yeah. Uh, we hang out a lot. You know, uh, we had a Talking about you know the runs on Sunday and stuff like that, so you know just to get a little condition and then I I go you know work on making shots and stuff like that with live defender. So that's what I use that for. And that and Brody is how I came in contact with that. No, yeah, I was just curious, you know, because I actually live in uh, Whippany, so you know I saw you guys there. I was kind of curious, you know, that was pretty cool, you know, just to see you guys working out, you know, by my hometown. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty fun on the weekends. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just, you know, getting back to practice real quick, you know, before we let you go soon. Just, you know, being in practice, who are you looking at besides, obviously, Miles Powell, you know, being the leader? Who are you looking at to, you know, kind of get tips from and, you know, help you, you know, step up your own game personally? Uh, I would say I would look at, I look at, I look at Clinchy a lot. And, um, you know, he's been doing good things. It's just, it's just the summer, you know, he's kind of quiet right now. Um, he, he still talks a little bit, but not as vocal as I know. He kind of when the season starts and stuff like that. But I look at Q a lot, whether he realizes it or not. Uh, Q was just a really smart player. You know, we came from the same, we came from mid-majors. So I like watching people that came from where I came from, you know, how they operate, what they do to make people better around them. So... I say I watch Q and I, and I watch Miles Carroll, you know, the way he attacks the rim, stuff like that, so I can add stuff like that to my game, so Q and Miles Carroll. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, two role models to definitely watch out for. Just wanted to ask you real quick, you know, I know Coach Willard at USA Basketball, but, you know, just being around him for a short period of time, I mean, how has he so far been as, you know, your coach and, you know, kind of like a role model and mentor around you? Yeah, that's awesome. You know, Coach Willard, you know, is definitely, you know, one of the best to do it around in the NCAA. But, you know, just, you know, kind of getting to the end of the uh, interview, you know, just talking to you, you know, about your time at the uh, MAC with Kinesius and then coming to Seton Hall. I mean, how excited are you to play in the Big East, you know, known as one of the best conferences, you know, for basketball in the country? I mean, how excited are you to, you know, get in that new atmosphere and, you know, get to play on a bigger stage? Uh, I'm very excited, you know. Uh, day in and day out, there's no off games, you know, teams that you just blow off and you're going to relax, so... Uh, I think for me, you know, the bigger the spotlight, the better I am. So I'm all for it. Definitely, yeah. So you know, just you know, going into you know, obviously this year you got to sit out, but going into you know the following year, what can Pirates fans expect from you? You know, on the court. Uh, they can expect me to uh, play hard. You know, they can expect me to fill it up every night. To be honest, uh, score wise, um, stepping in for miles. So, you know, just, you know, are you working on, you know, the three-point shot or something, you know, kind of some just with the extra load, you know, you probably plan on taking going into the next year? I mean, are you working on that specifically to, you know, get your uh, average, uh, you know, three-point shot up? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely working on that. You know, uh, I didn't let uh, 
last year at Kenesha, you know, the percentage, I didn't let, let that affect me. Uh, my confidence is still high in my three-pointer, and uh, I feel like I can get in the paint when I want to. So, like I said, uh, part of being a pro is making a shot. That's something that's going to keep you on the floor. It's a long run. So I'm definitely working on that, you know. I would never lose confidence in that. Definitely going to be way better than Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, that's great to hear. You know, definitely, you know, we're going to be watching out for that. Last question before we let you go. Just curious, you know, what are your expectations for the season? You know, for the Pirates, even though, you know, you have to sit out, but just being around the guys, what's your expectation for them this year? And who is someone under the radar that we should be looking out for this year? Yeah, you know, just uh, you know, it's kind of you know ironic. Isaiah uh, also said, you know, Jarrett Roden, someone to watch out for. And, you know, he has the same expectations. So it's awesome to hear that. You know, all you guys are hungry. You know, definitely, you know, up for the challenge. So we just, uh, you know, just wanted to end by saying, you know, thanks for coming on the show. You know, it meant a lot to us. You know, get to you know talk to you for a little bit. And, you know, we wish you the best. You know, sitting out this year. You know, going into your next year. You know, we hope to see you guys win the Big East title and you know make some noise in the tournament in the coming years. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so have a good rest of your summer. You know, can't wait to see you play next year. Yes, sir. Enjoy your summer. You too, man. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Yeah, so that was the call, Molson, new Seton Hall University guard. He'll be eligible not this year, 2019, 2020. He'll be ineligible going into 2020, 2021. He'll be eligible for his junior year. So we're excited to see him. You know, hopefully, like he said, he fills up the stat book. You know, taking on the load probably for Miles Powell when he leaves after his senior year this year. And, you know, we're hoping to see some, you know, great plays by him and, you know, have him make a run for Seton Hall in the tournament. Have a good day.